hi everyone so i often try out all kinds of art supplies here on this channel and today is no different but today i want to show you that you don't really need fancy fancy art supplies to create art with the only thing that you really need is this you're in the middle of my recording. Sally just wants to say that you don't need any stupid art supplies. All you need is cat. So yeah, as I was saying, it is nothing new creating art with cheaper art supplies, but I think that we can sometimes need to remind ourselves that less is also great. Thank you, Sally, for your contribution. In Sally's mind, I'm just sitting here waving a stupid pen around, so I might as well just give her attention and pet her, of course. So yeah, this is just a regular old ballpoint pen and nothing fancy or anything. I think I bought this in a pack of 10 or 20 or something. And to stick with the cheap art supply theme, I'm gonna use just regular copy paper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to clear my workspace a bit and then I'm gonna show you some different techniques that you can use using a ballpoint pen. So when I work with ballpoint pens or sometimes fine liners, I use... Are you seriously cleaning yourself in the middle of my paper? I think that someone needs a little bit of attention today. You can't sit here. Please move. You can have your own paper to sit on. So yeah, as I was saying, when I'm drawing with ballpoint pens or sometimes fine liners, I like to start with a lighter pressure and then adding a little more pressure to refine the lines. <laughs> Sally. And that is how you draw a cat. You just start with a circle. The and then when shading, you can use just regular hatching and you can do the lines or strokes as sparse or as dense as you want to, depending on how dark of a shadow that you want. And then you can do lines in the other direction, which is called cross hatching. And again, you can do the lines as sparse or as dense as you want to. And something that I like to do, which is a bit of a stylistic choice, is to actually make a line to define the shading before making the actual shading. I make a very thin line and then I make the shading inside that area. And it is a bit of a stylistic choice, but I think it just helps to define the shadow and just to make it a little more crisp. I think it also helps me to know where I want the shadow and how to make the shape of the shadow because there isn't really any return when you start making the hatching. I just think it helps making the shadow more even, I suppose. So yeah, it all depends on what style you're going for, but this is a style that I like to use. Also, what I like with using a ballpoint pen is that you can actually adjust the darkness of the ink, I suppose. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but if you use a lighter pressure, and this also depends on what kind of ballpoint pen you're using. Some of them are more dry and some of them are more juicy. I prefer the more drier kind because you can actually get these super, super light lines or pen strokes. Then in a different angle and using a little bit more pressure, you get way darker lines. So, so I think that can be very helpful when creating shading and stuff like that. So yeah, you can actually create a lot of contrast and depth using only a ballpoint pen. So, but yeah, I think that is that. So let's try to make some awesome epic art using only this little guy. Let's get started. Well, I don't know about awesome or epic art, but let's make some kind of art anyway. And I might add that I have not worked with ballpoint pens in a very long time, so my skills, they are probably a little rusty. But I did work a lot, I mean a lot, with pens when I was younger. There was this time when it was the only thing that I used. And guys, something completely different. I don't know what's up with Sally today. It is like the ballpoint pen is like catnip. She usually never becomes this clingy, but I guess she just wants a little bit of attention. And what kind of cat mom would I be if I didn't give her the attention that she deserves?
But as I was saying, I used to do a lot of art using ballpoint pens only, and it actually started when I was on the bus to school one day, and I think the bus company was handing out pens for like promotion or something, and this pen, it became one of my favorite art supplies. I used it for a very, very long time. It was just so perfect to draw with, and I still haven't found a ballpoint pen quite as good as the bus pen. The ones I'm using right now, they are pretty close though, they are really good, but my point is that you can actually create art with basically anything, and you can enjoy simple materials and tools just as much as something else that costs a lot more. And ballpoint pens, it is something that most people have at home, and if not, it isn't very hard or expensive to get one, and sometimes they are even handed out for free. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this cute little witchy kitty that I haven't really talked about, but yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing it. So the next one, it is some sort of made up creature. It looks a little like a fox, but the tail, it looks more like a lion's tail. So it is either a fion or flyon or a lox, I suppose. But I was talking before about that it is good to remind ourselves sometimes that expensive doesn't mean better. Well, sometimes it actually does, but you get my point. As a person who has collected quite a few art supplies over the years, I find it somewhat refreshing to go back to basics sometimes, and it kind of makes me appreciate the supplies that I already have a bit more, but it also reminds me that less or simple, it is also good and fun. And I want to address something that actually is one of the reasons to why I wanted to make a video like this. So I got a comment from a person a little while ago saying that they don't really watch my videos where I review or try out new supplies and the reason that they gave was that they would never buy those art supplies anyways and that is totally fine, you don't have to watch all of my videos but guys I really hope that it never comes across in my videos that you have to own or buy a specific supply or thing just because I recommend it or because I like it. That is not my intention at all. I am just a person who is very excited and curious about trying out new things, especially art supplies, because art is my passion and I want to share it with people who share my passion or interest for art supplies or art or just find stuff like that interesting in general. I also hope that my reviews can be to any help to someone and maybe shed some light in the big jungle of art supplies that is out there because art supplies aren't always cheap as we all know and sometimes it can be hard to know what to get and what not to get and of course it is also for entertainment, I mean it is YouTube, but I do love doing what I do and I love working with different art supplies, all from expensive Copics to super cheap ballpoint pens, but you definitely don't need all of those things that I'm showing you, so I hope this video can be a little inspiring and uplifting in that matter. And speaking of using many different supplies, the reason too why I never really stick to just one art supply, it is because different supplies brings out different art styles, that is how it is for me anyway. I mean, my main style will always be there, but I have to adjust the technique to the art supply, which makes the style a little different too. And that is one of the things that keeps art fun and exciting for me, knowing that there are so many things and techniques to use and to try out. And what I love about ballpoint pens is that it brings out a lot of playful, sketchy textures. I try to keep a very loose wrist while I'm drawing and just do whatever comes to mind and having fun with it. You can just see on the fur and on the tip of the tail how many different lines that is going in all different directions, and I just love the look of that. And I try to 
make a starry background behind the character and it may not be the prettiest of skies, but I like the contrast against the more lightly shaded fox creature. And I hope you love him as much as I do, he looks so concerned and it is adorable. So I thought I would try to do something more realistic too after doing these two more cartoony pieces and I've done quite a few human portraits in pen before but I wasn't really feeling it this time so I kept with the animal creature theme and that is what I enjoy doing the most anyway. So of course I'm drawing another little husky pup, it isn't really a puppy, but they are so adorable. And I actually had to make a very light pencil sketch underneath just to have some guides to follow. And I actually did that for all of these drawings. I am not ashamed to admit that I am terrible at freehanding art unless it is just mindless doodling. Those who can actually freehand with permanent art supplies like ink or pen, it is so impressive. But personally, I'm not really there yet and I'm totally okay with that. So I didn't really have any plans for any of these pieces when adding hatching or cross hatching or any kinds of lines really. For me this medium is supposed to be relaxed and almost a bit spontaneous kind of. It is a sketching medium to me, like sketching with a pencil, and I know it is not the same for everyone, but that is how it is for me anyway. And I find that I enjoy the ballpoint pen art even more when I have a more relaxed mindset, not thinking too much about what I'm doing. And I really love how you can layer the pen to build up the contrast and the shading. I like to start very light and then add more and more layers. I don't want to go in too dark too early since it is ink so you can't really erase it or lighten it up so it is better to go in too light than too dark. Unless the area is supposed to be very dark or black like the starry sky in the previous piece then it doesn't really matter. Matter. So as you may have noticed I'm going over the same area several times just to build up the contrast which may seem a bit tedious which it is sometimes. I feel like I could have made the portrait a little smaller on the paper because it is a lot of area to fill in with a tiny little ballpoint pen and you can actually see at the end that I left a little area of the fur unshaded because my hand simply just said nope. But I still had a lot of fun with it, I really love working with this medium and the very thin and flimsy copy paper that I'm working on, it actually held up pretty well. It did buckle and warp just a little on the darker areas, but still it is working great. I had so much fun revisiting this supply, I don't know if it is technically an art supply, it is more stationary, but I made art with it so why not call it art supply. I love how this little husky turned out, even if I didn't finish it 100%, but I only think it adds to the sketchy, doodly feeling that ballpoint pens gives. And I don't know if it was a super informative video when it comes to explaining the process and how to draw with a ballpoint pen, but I hope that the art itself at least can give you an idea or inspiration what techniques that you can use. There are so many different ways to use it, so my best advice is to just grab a pen and start drawing, and you will probably find out yourself your favorite ways of using it. I just wanted to give a little bit of love to the less expensive supplies too, because they deserve it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and the drawings, let me know which one you like the most. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe to my channel for even more art and art supplies and cats, and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!